I haven't done a video like this since Donkey Kong and me, and to wrap up this Halloween, I really want to talk about some of my favorite scary games. It, just to let you know, some of your favorite horse, some of your favorite horror games will not be in this video, uh, but make a recommendation at the bottom of this video. But let me give you some of my favorite horror games because you know a lot of people have been um, really talking about scary games this um, this whole entire month. So I really want to get into this discussion about my my experience with horror games <laughs> in all my years in gaming. So let me talk about one of the first scariest game I ever played. I mean, like, a lot of people have been um, really scared in a lot of levels, like, um, in the early days of gaming, when they were very when they were very small. Like, for example, the booze mansions from the Super Mario games that did scare a lot of gamers for, at a young age. And a lot of people have a lot of fond memories of being scared of games like Ocarina of Time, for example. And one of the first scary games that legitimately made me scared, today it's nothing to talk about because it's more fun to play than actually being scared. But one of the first games that actually made me legitimately scared was the first Doom game. And I gotta say, the satanic imagery was pretty much one of the most intense moments I have ever seen in a video game. Entering a world of hell was pretty much one of the one of the early first intense experiences I ever had in a video game. I first saw that when I went to a church member's house and their son was actually playing this demonic game, which was a big no-no for our religion. When we, uh, when I got a chance to take a look at what uh, the oldest son was actually playing, I stared, looked at the game. I took 10 minutes just staring at the game, amazed at how scary the game first looked. <laughs> that was the first time I actually cried over a game because it was that, that scary. As soon as he saw me cry, he immediately turned on Rayman the game, which was the first time I ever played Rayman 1. But 10 years later, I got back to Doom, and it's not scary anymore because, you know, gra uh, because the gaming industry keeps on moving, and we've been experiencing a lot of improvements over the years that going back to old scary games like, like Doom, for example, is not really much to talk about nowadays. But I still have to say that Doom was pretty much one of my first experiences of being scared in the game. But it's still fun to this day. I'm not turning down Doom whatsoever. I'm just saying that it's not as scary as it used to be. But I still had a lot of fond memories. But what really struck me about scary games was every time I went to the arcades, I always loved watching guys play um, the arcades when I'm uh, out of money. One game that really brought me to be actually scared of a game was House of the Dead. First time encountering it, that game actually gave me nightmares, but as time moved on, I actually got used to it, but I wouldn't dare touch the light gun at the time, but I always always like to watch somebody actually play it. And that's how it got me interested in scary games in the first place, by watching other people play scary games. And it was amazing just to see uh, a, a lot of players playing House of the Dead from beginning to end, uh, you know, seeing them... Um, actually have the bravery to play that game for its time. I really wanted to bring my suspense of disbelief of being scared. Around when I was eight years old, I remember we went to um, a ch another uh, church party and uh, all the kids were going to um, the, the oldest son's room and we were taking a look at the PlayStation 1 games because, you know, back in the day, PlayStation 1 was, was the number one console for, every, uh, for everybody I knew around the time. But what really got all of us interested was the first time we saw the oldest son of the family that had all the survival horror games imaginable. He had Resident Evil 1 and two, uh, one through 3, and he had like pretty much one of the most mature games that was too much to handle for us um, younger gamers. But So, so night overnight, we made plans about uh, spending the night at that family's house and have what we call survival horror night, because we, we really like to see a lot of scary games. And one of my favorite moments was um, when we were playing Resident Evil uh, 1 and 3. I never got a chance to play 2 until, um, until it was released for the PlayStation Store. But I remember playing the first Resident Evil. It was pretty intense. I mean, the youngest son, this was the first time he ever played it. His older brother just let us play it and have some fun and left us alone. But the youngest son, which was uh, our best friend at the time, he was holding controller and he w it, we were giving him so much respect because he was the one who was, you know, the, the riskiest, who was holding the, the, who was playing the game, and whoever held the controller was suicidal to us, while the rest of us were trying to figure out puzzles, and 
and helping him and guiding him what we should do and all that stuff because like I said in my survival horror videos is that adventure games are really hard to manage and you need a lot of thinking power in order to make uh, in order to beat the game so two heads are better than one so we had like four of us and while um, we were playing the game we were like under the blankets you know scared to, uh, at what we were witnessing and I remember when we beat Resident Evil 1 we went to Resident Evil 3 and it was it was much more scarier than Resident Evil 1 because not only the city was filled with zombies but Nemesis was actually trying to kill you and he pops out of the most unexpected moments which was brought the most intensity up to the roof. The one Resident Evil game which is not exactly the most popular Resident Evil game but the one that really was um, terrifying to play for its time was um, Resident Evil Survivor. Oh man, I remember watching that game in first person. Seeing a game in first person was pretty much one of the most intense moments that all my friends had with the Resident Evil series. But what made us stop doing um, Survival Horror Night when we got a chance to play Metal Gear Solid? Well, keep in mind that we were very young and we had no idea that it was a uh, stealth game. We all thought it was a survival horror mixed with action and we all thought that the controls were actually really good for a survival horror game. But, you know, it was really intense for us younger gamers to actually handle games like that because the story was mature and the intensity was very high. But what made us stop um, doing survival horror at night was the one moment where we encountered Psycho Mantis. And at that moment was pretty much the most insane experiences I ever had in gaming period. I remember the first time when my friend was um, was holding the controller and we were going what the heck is going on so, you know because we we've been seeing Psycho Mantis again and again we were so scared to encounter him and by the time we finally got a chance to see him face to face and he was controlling Meryl oh man and we didn't know what to do and instantly when we finally got to knock her out Psycho Mantis has appeared and I remember my friend who was holding the controller, he was going psychotic and he, because um, Psycho Mantis at the time was like reading the memory card and he was like, so you like to play this game? And then my friend was like, how did he know? He thought, he, we thought we, he was actually literally li reading his mind. So he immediately dropped the controller because he was so intense and so scared. And he was like, I can't hold the controller anymore. I can't hold it. Somebody has to do it. And we were like, we're not going to touch that thing, but that one instant that made everybody, you know, scared out of their minds was the part where Psycho Mantis was con moving the controller. I know that a lot of people have played, uh, who played Metal Gear Solid already knows this, but doing this for the first time was not only innovative, but probably one of the most craziest moments we have ever had in the game. In the moment where they, he moved the controller, we were just like, we were just like blown out of our minds. We couldn't handle the the intensity, and it felt like, it felt like the first time a video game character is actually coming out of a video game, and that's the reason why Psycho Mantis' reputation of being one of the greatest video game, the greatest villain of all time, is clearly deserved because the innovation that Hideo Kojima has put in that game was, you know, really raising up the roof, and. It was so scary that I could never play another scary game ever. And that moment, I couldn't sleep in days because of what I witnessed that ex uh, that instant. The next time I played a survival horror game is like when I was invited to another friend's house. My mom was my mom's friends was having a party, and all the kids were once again playing another uh, another PlayStation game. And one of the most scariest games I had ever played at that point in my life when we played Silent Hill for the first time. I, I swore to myself that I was never going to play another horror game, but I heard a lot of people talking about this game a lot, so I decided to try it. I was nine years old at the time when I first played it. The, oldest, the older brother who owned the game, he was like, you gotta try this, go ahead and play it. And that instant when we were like trying to save Cheryl from, or as uh, Harry Mason, Oh my god, I remember seeing, trying to find her, and we found that corpse who was crucified. At that moment, I almost fainted because that was pretty much one of the most disturbing moments I ever had in the game. And when Harry Mason got knocked out from those little kids, those little midget zombies, or monsters, whatever the hell it is. Um, and then we woke up from uh, Sybil, the cop who, was, uh, who found us uh, lying on the floor. Uh, when she left, I was like, oh god, no. 
And by the time uh, when I was playing the game and I was about to leave um, the place that I was uh, resting at, instantly the board, the part that I actually fainted over a game. This game, this was the first time I ever fainted over a video game was the part where that flying monster just came out of the window. I remember that everybody in the room was slapping me in the face telling me, wake up, you you just fainted. And every we were, I was like, can you please play the controller? I can't do it. And the, the oldest brother's friend was like, oh no, I can't touch that thing. I won't dare touch that thing. And I continued playing it. But, but the part where we finally reached to um, the school, because I thought that's where we finally found Cheryl. Oh, man. See, more of that midget zombies. I said, I had enough. You know, that was the time when I said, I had enough playing survival horrors, period. And I never got a chance to got back into survival horrors until, until I was like in my uh, late middle school years and early high school years. I remember one of my friends was, uh, actually had Silent Hill 2 and 3. And I was very curious because uh, the first one was really scary. And because the story was, was really classic horror storytelling. When it comes to deciding which one is the best uh, Silent Hill game, lots of people will say 2 was their favorite. Mainly because they all love Pyramid Head. And I can't deny that Pyramid Head really did scare me when I was, when I was starting um, high school. One of my favorite moments was um, um, Silent Hill 3. A lot... My major complaint about Silent Hill 3 is that it was it's too hard to kill enemies. I mean, like, a lot of people would say that, that of course, it has to be hard to be ki killing enemies, otherwise it wouldn't be scary. I would agree at that moment, but what about when the giant blob is in your way when you're trying to get past through the train? But the one moment that really did scare me, I know I showed this, um, I showed this uh, footage a lot in my um, survival horror series, but the one moment that really did terrify me was pretty much the, my favorite scare in the whole entire series was when Heather was entering a room and there was a bunch of mirrors and you see a reflection and you see a bunch of um, you know stuff moving and you couldn't identify it and you try to get out of the door and you couldn't do it because at that moment you couldn't um, you were helpless you were pretty much going to be you were pretty much trapped and all we could do is just witnessing what's happening in the reflection because it's not happening in real life so we were watching what was happening and then your reflection pretty much stopped and then she turned bloody and then you were like what the hell is going on what's going on here what the fuck am I supposed to do and then by the time you realize that the stuff that was happening in the reflection was coming out symbiote style pretty much one of the darkest moments I ever had in the game I mean like this one surpasses uh, surpasses everything I experienced from my early days of survival horror games Oh man, seeing that moment was pretty much the moment that I thought my heart stopped. Because that moment was really something. I mean, I'm pretty surprised that it's not the most memorable scares in the whole entire series because a lot of people remember Silent Hill because of Pyramid Head.